Hey, welcome back to the Travel Wins Podcast. Today, my, I have two guests from the band Whiskey Myers. I have Tony Kent and Jamie Gleaves. How are you guys doing today? I'm excellent. There you go. Hanging now, in how there. How are you, James? I'm hanging oh, in. You've had, yeah, you've had a busy morning. How are you, yeah. Pete? You know, it's interesting. I was telling my wife, because I'm like, hey, we're, we're backed up an hour. Because you guys are doing all the same stuff I have to do. Like, when I'm home and not traveling, I have to get the dentist appointments and the car fixed, <laughs> you know, all, all the honeydews and everything else that's supposed to get done around the house. Cause then I got to go back on the road. Is it kind of yeah, for you guys? Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a honeydew yeah. list, but you know, <laughs> well, call you yourself whatever list. you want. I don't care. <laughs> 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 I've never called myself honey, but I might start doing that now. There you go. New hey. nickname. I'm not going to call you. I like that, it. But. <laughs> <laughs> you can call him honey dude that's a, that'd be a not a good tour name maybe just hd <laughs> so they're really not back harley davidson but it really means yeah. that you do yeah. yeah there you go so is that is you guys is it always trying to get stuff done in between the, the tour dates and everything yeah so this year like it's been we've been off technically since mid-december so we've had a lot of time. Um, I mean, we, we did like a week of rehearsals and we did, we've done three shows so far, but a couple of years ago, like we started, uh, we decided like we, we, we weren't going to basically tour in the, the, the cold months because it's just, really? nobody wants to do that. You know, <laughs> we used to have to do that all the time. They'd send us to Maine in January. <laughs> um, we can pick and choose a little more and, and, a lot of the guys have young kids at the house. Um, so it's, it's good to have to start the year, have a couple months off, you know. Um, but I don't want to speak for James, but Jamie, but we uh, we usually wait to the last minute. And it's like we're leaving in two days. And it's like oh, I had three months to do everything I needed to do. And now I got to do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm guilty. You of say that the same well. thing, James. Yeah. And it's, it's also, it's also the thing where, you know, it doesn't matter the temperature in the house or outside, you're going to take a shower right before you leave. And as soon as, you know, 15, 20 minutes before you actually leave, you're going to start sweating real hard. Yeah. Call it stress. Exactly. Yeah. Are you guys, get, are, are you, are you pretty good at packing it up now for trips? I still overpack a bit, but I handwrite what I'm going to take every time. Cause like it just sticks with me more. Um, Jamie, I, I'd say you're really good at packing. Like you well, just bring like, I overpack. Hell, we go to I Europe and you'll take a bag that's this big. Yeah. Because I refuse to check a bag. It is. It, I'm the guy that's going to lose his stuff like in the airport. <laughs> but that being said, I mean, I'm not good at packing. I just stay packed. I packed once and I just trade out clothes. <laughs> I live out of my suitcase and car still, even though I've got a little yeah. home. I have two sets now. I just went screw it. I have one because I, I kept forgetting things. So like I'd pack, I'd pack stuff up and then be like, ah, oh, I forgot this. Or I forgot that. My, 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 my little buck knife or any, you know, little stuff I take on my trips. I just have two yeah. of everything now. See, that's smart. Um, even like a, phone charger yep. like now i keep one in my bunk that just stays on the road all the time and it's like i've been on the road how many years and i never thought about buying an extra charger yeah, exactly. <laughs> so i can leave one at the house and then take one you know yeah i, I did that with a my, my, i have a, a screw, little screwdriver for my glasses mm. because i kept I, you know I, i'd fix them here or whatever and then i'd be on the road like oh, it's at home it's in the drawer i know right where it's at yeah. So just pack two of everything now. Well, before you got on, Jamie, I was telling Pete, he looks real dialed in. I think we're underdressed. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been uh, I've been cruising around for the last few days, and I just walked in the door about 10 minutes ago. Well, so. I, have, Pete, I have an unfair advantage, Jamie, because I get my gear for free. So it's it's it's. Well, I actually have, I mean, I've got professional microphones here and I've got, you know, nice headsets and everything, 
But uh, when it comes down to these live recording things, every time I've done it, it was like I had to either use my phone, which I can't plug in my microphones to, or I had to use my iPad, which I can't plug my microphones into. Um, or if we want to do video, I can't use my computers where my microphones work, you know, because I don't have a video thing there. So, you know, uh, all the technology has come so far that a phone should be good. I don't know why the Bluetooth is not working right now. And I can only hear you through my phone speaker, but that's okay. I can hear you fine. <laughs> I was, I, my first probably hundred episodes was just with my phone audio only. And I used, you know, the, the, the Apple headset for like the first hundred yeah. episodes, but then I had a lot more editing. And then I, um, I interviewed Steve Stevens, the guitarist from Billy Idol. And this, oh, is, yeah. this was his mic, com the mic company that he gets sponsored by. And he, so he got, he sent me one. I was like, that's cool. So that's awesome. So just a little, you know, and then like I told you, I got tired of the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth messing up when I'd be on the on on a recording. So I just went hardwire everything. Uh, two hundred. Yeah. yeah, there's there's too much too much up in the air when you rely on Bluetooth and Wi Wi-Fi, and then they don't sometimes work together. And it's it's just if you can cut out the middleman, just go direct. Yeah, yeah, and that's like I, it's hard enough getting people on the phone that are business travelers. So messing around with, with like for us we're off for a while so actually i, guess I know we go back yeah, april 5th maybe so we still got a little time too yeah definitely not a business traveler either well you, you are <laughs> you take your business and travel so yeah <laughs> is it business though hey man yeah it's business do you get paid the music business <laughs> that's true that's true i forgot about that part of it yeah. What, what, what's, what's it's not all funny games james <laughs> you, get, you get paid right yeah, yeah. yeah maybe yeah. not <laughs> see how his phone broke up right when that came up yeah oh so i get paid in smiles <laughs> <laughs> in that case uh that's the conversation you guys need to have after the show <laughs> uh, what you're in California, right, Pete? Yes, sir. Are you Pete or Peter? What do you Either think? or. Either or. So we, we like to shorten everything. Like, yeah, yeah. So um, what part of California? I'm just I'm about nine miles south of LAX, Redondo Beach. Right on. So, yeah, a couple hundred miles north of the border. And then I go all the way up to San Francisco and Sacramento, Fresno, for my territory. You ever go through Morro Bay? I do. Uh -huh. I have uh, Favorite place I've ever been. The farm supply is right in San Luis Obispo. They have five stores uh, through the Central yeah. Coast. So I go up and down there. Yeah, I love like that whole area. It's so great. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, the one is still shut down. They had the, the mudslides, so just south oh, of Big really? Sur, you can't go can't go on the one anymore. I've still never been to Big Sur. I'd love to go. Like the pictures look amazing, and everybody that I've talked to that's been there, it's like it's it's, it's awesome. I could send you some. Pictures. Yeah, I still haven't been. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty nice. And then you know, I go to Fresno, Bakersfield, all the all the wherever there, people wear Western clothing is where I go. Yeah, that's so, awesome. And then you know, I work the rodeo at, in Vegas, the NFR. You guys played there? Oh, man, we haven't. But our tour manager, he goes every single year. His yeah. his in laws, they're big like like cattle, like they own a ranch, and uh, they're big into that world, rodeo world. They go every year. And they're for but, 16 no, I, days. I still haven't been. So that's that's a long time to be in Vegas. Yeah. And, and, I usually and, tap and, out yeah. at two. <laughs> I know, right? And after yeah. 14, 15, I think this will be my 15th or 16th time going. So it's, it's, oh, dang. It's a long, because we do four days of setup, five days of setup, and then 10 days of the actual rodeo and then tear down. Yeah. So it's, it's work for us. Everyone's going to have a party and all that. But what? <laughs> That's like shows for us. Everybody, like all of our guests show up and they're like, ready Let's to party. party. Like, we got to go to work. You know? <laughs> exactly. It's kind of keep it because, together a little while. <laughs> I'll see people. Yeah. I have some friends in, 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 in music and entertainment and, and I'll go check them out and they're working. So I kind of be cool. And then when they come see me, I'm working. So I don't have as much time to, to BS yeah. and shoot, the, shoot the breeze. So kind of the same deal. Yeah. It's usually like say hello and then kind of got to roll and do your thing, you know? Now, with, with all the days you're you guys touring on a bus right mm -hmm. do they ever book in and i'm sure they don't but do, do they book in extra time for you to like if, if you go to rapid city do you get time to go see mount rushmore do you, do you get to go and see any of the the events 
different things going on in different cities? Or is it usually just Usually not. We're usually yeah. kind of in and out. I mean, we'll occasionally get um you know, a couple days off and then you know, we might go see something like actually uh we were in Sturgis last year and I thought we were like we we were doing a, like a helicopter tour. Um and I thought we were going to like Mount Rushmore. Um turns out it was too far away and they also decided to let Jamie fly the helicopter once we got up there, which I was absolutely terrified. Like, I guess you did a good job. Like we landed, but <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I'm not, that was my first helicopter ride. And I was, I was not, <laughs> so we, we'll, we'll occasionally get to do some like, like touristy stuff, but most of the time it's like, we're there, we're in and out though. So. Yeah. We, we might've lost James. He's kind of frozen there. Oh, James. Well, that's that's pretty normal where I live. Hear me? Yeah, yeah. kind of. Uh, I'm sorry. I I make I'm I'm apologize for making your show a total mess. No, nah, dude, it's cool, man. Oh, you're kind of um, back. Well, yep. if it if it's a if it's an ops awful thing, then I won't be offended if I have to get off. <laughs> well, I'll be offended. I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, easily offend, offendable. Well, yeah, no, that was funny. That story that Tony was talking about because I have never flown a helicopter in my life. And most of our guys are, uh, I don't say, like, I'm the only one adventurous enough to, like, yeah, I'll take some sketchy helicopter ride that nobody else wants to see. And obviously, it wasn't sketchy. But it was a very nice, like, helicopter. Uh, they were like, hey, what the fuck? So uh, I said, well, I mean, I'll fly, but Tony was not having it. Um, <laughs> and they were like, well, let's go down and get some, let's go down and get some speed and some embankments. And Tony's like, nope, please, can we go land? So, yeah. I mean, it was funny. I had a blast doing it. And it was kind of funny watching watching uh, Tony's reaction to it, but he toughed it out. Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> well, and they told me, yeah. like, we're, we were going to land. And I mean, this is like, super super nice helicopter and like the actual pilot like it was dialed in um but they were messing with me so they were like yeah we're gonna let jamie land and i was like i love james but can we like please anybody not else <laughs> yeah um because yeah i, I was kind of like we got up there and i was i was i was a little nervous I'm not but, gonna but, lie, but that makes a good story, see? Yeah, and we got some good pictures out of it. I like, pilot now. Yeah, technically, I mean, you don't have all your hours, but <laughs> no, my license, but I have. I the helicopters freak me out too. I, I I'm okay in planes. I don't like helicopters too much. Yeah, I definitely went through a phase with where planes kind of uh, freak me out, but I mean. Now we're like last year we we had a lot of fly dates so just like you kind of get used to it and it's you know but I don't want to I don't want to uh I don't want to travel in a helicopter unless like so me and Jamie really like Oasis and there's a uh, they're like biggest show they were flying in to the show on a helicopter yeah and it it made really cool footage so if we ever wanted to do that, I would get in the helicopter, but you know, let's just not go too far. <laughs> <laughs> well, Southern rock bands don't have a good, good history with, uh, no, with travel. That's all I'm saying. No. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, that's why I keep this St. Christopher on at all times. There you go. And I keep one around my, around my neck too. Cause as much as we travel, I need the same travel to be with me. No. I mean, uh, I interviewed Rudy Sarzo, the, the bass mm -hmm. player. Uh, yeah. Was with Ozzy and Randy Rhodes is the reason why he was with Ozzy because they were both a quiet riot. Yeah. And obviously, Randy was in the bus. Or, I mean, Rudy was in the bus when Randy hit it in the plane and died. Yeah. So, mm. not good. That's, yeah, that's, that's heavy stuff, you know. Uh, it's like, and like you're out on the road and like, mid tour yeah you, you feel like kind of in invincible in a way it's like 
So it's it's really weird when those things happen. Um, yeah, sure. Because I I don't know. Like I prefer it, it is nice getting home quicker, but I definitely feel safer on the bus. Even though I guess in the air is technically safer, you know. Technically. Um, but it's just like the bus feels it, it's it's a comfort zone, you know. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm and our driver has like over a million miles accident free knock on wood so you know he's great so uh, got a question for you jamie so okay who's who was the original bass player for the band rush oh, original yeah oh, that's a uh, uh that's a trick question because it's not getty lee obviously correct it is Getty Lee? No, no, it wasn't Getty. Oh, it's not. No, then I have no idea. It was a guy named Jeff Jones. I had him on the show because I met him at a Western store. He was buying a shirt for a gig. Uh, but he was high school friends with Alex Lifeson, the guitarist. And so they started Rush, and then he quit because it wasn't going anywhere, and then they, they brought in Getty. <laughs> and then, oh, my God. And, and then uh, they went on. But uh, insane. Jeff went on to play with... Um, I didn't know this either. He went on with uh, Red Rider uh, with uh, Tom Cochran. So they did uh, Lunatic Fringe and Life is a Highway and all that. So it, he, he did okay. but Interesting. Yeah. I, I, met him at, like I, I was at a Western store and he's buying a shirt. And I'm like, hey, man. I go, you need any help? And he's like, yeah, yeah. So we start talking. I go, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, I'm, I'm playing. So. <laughs> I'm uh, playing. As humble as it like, as humble as that is. I started Rush. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm playing. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. But, Getty Lee replaced me. <laughs> I think they were, wasn't your first base at Getty Lee, James? The, yeah, it was my first base, actually. Getty Lee's signature. There it is. You still got it? Good play it like him, but try. Well, that's, you know, that's, I was just shocked. I, I couldn't believe he was telling me this story. Yeah, then, you know, that's just, wild. I, I never knew that either. Yeah, just going to high school with, a, with your buddy and you start a little bank called Rush. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, what, uh, for both of you, what, what's the most influential cities or places you guys have been to? For me, uh, Tony, Tony mentioned, uh, go ahead, Tony. Well, I was just saying, um, so I lived in New York for, this is before whiskey, but I lived in New York for, uh, like three and a half years. And that's kind of where I cut my teeth. Um, I moved from, a town of 817 people to uh, Brooklyn, New York, uh, which was quite the culture shock. But I was in my early 20s, and that was the perfect time to be there. Um, so we don't we don't really play New York that much anymore, just because um, I, it's it's just such a pain getting the buses and trucks and everything there, and and parking and and playing, so I, mean, I don't think we've played New York since 2019, like proper, like New York City. Um, but New York has definitely had an influence on me um, as far as like 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 getting started. Sure. Uh, I mean, I'll always be a Texas boy because like you know, if, if we're, we're we're pretty proud, uh, it's a pretty proud state, you know. Um, so I mean I, I I can't take away from like the, the the small town I was raised in you know, um, but New York probably had I mean that's kind of where I I got my start if you will. Um, I wish we would go back more. We probably won't. But you don't yeah, come to LA that much either, is. so it's okay. No, I think we were there twenty twenty two. Um, and we're doing some California stuff this year, but I don't think it's LA proper. Correct. It's um, not. I wish it was like, I love, I love going to LA too. Uh, You'll like San, the Santa Barbara Bowl. Pretty cool though. You'll like that place. That Yeah. I had a buddy uh, that reached out and was like, Hey, that's a really, really rad spot. Yeah. I, just, I played the Hollywood bowl. Uh, I think 2014 ish. And that was surreal. That was one of those moments where, you know, like so, so many times you're just trying to do your job and you're just trying to play the parts and trying to play the songs. But I made a mo I made, I, I, I took a moment to like 
appreciate like like looking out it's like wow this is the hollywood bowl this is awesome and you know i did the same thing with the first time we played red rocks a couple of years ago it's like this is this is special you know yeah how about, about you, you james uh i don't i don't know that anything is I, when you say influential i'm not sure that i've had a place that was super influential into my life or my career or anything like that but Tony had mentioned earlier uh, Morro Bay, and it's one of my favorite places I've ever been in my life. Um, yeah, I, it was this place that I think I was I was having a rough day. I was I was in a bad mood for whatever reason, and I didn't sleep well the night before. So we rolled into this town I've never heard of, and I got up like at the crack of dawn. I was up when the sun came up, and I got off the bus. I had no idea where I was. I just wanted to go for a walk. And I got off the bus and I, I saw Morro Bay and I was immediately, I, I did, like I said, I didn't know where we were, but I was immediately struck by like, wow, I'm not just going to sit around it. Cause we had the day off. I, I said, I'm not just going to sit around and be lazy. Like I usually do. So I walked by myself down to, um, just walked down where I saw buildings and I found a bike rental shop and I walked in to rent. I was like, I'm gonna rent a bike and go cruise this, this cool beach place and all this stuff. I know nothing about it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make the day of it. And I walked in, and the guy was, uh, I said, "Hey, man, how's it going?" And he just kind of looked at me and scoffed and was like, "I, I live in Morro Bay. How do you think it's going?" And I was like, "Okay, if that is how this town is gonna be, then I think I'm gonna like it." Yeah. So I got my I got this bike and I, I drove around and I just I put on a playlist and. I cruised and saw the sites, which, you know, Morro Bay is not a very big town, uh, mm. but it's, it's a postcard town. I, I always say it looks like a uh, silver town from Joe dirt um, <laughs> as far as like, but on the beach, you know, yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a postcard town. And like I, I, when we went to the beach, it was, you know, clean water, clean beaches. And then right behind the beach was rolling green Hills with these little houses kind of spread out around. It just looked like a, like, like a postcard town it's and that's nice probably too yeah yeah very nice people and it's probably the only place i've ever been in my life where if retirement was ever an option uh, i wish i hope it would be more obey i always tell people yeah like, when i'm at the rodeo or whatever they're like you don't seem like you're from california and i go what does that mean and I'm like well you know you, you're like relaxed and i'm like well we have 40 million people so we have yeah. everything yeah we have nice yeah, people, well, jerks yeah. you know it's gang <laughs> members and and country people and everything else, everything in between. Yeah. We were like, I think the first, like the first couple times I had been to California, it had been like LA, San Francisco, maybe San Diego. And which then you get on some of the other towns and it's, like, yeah. it's totally different than like those, than like the major, major cities, you know? Yeah. Um, I I see California still has this, uh, the gold rush mentality of go west and you're going to find what you're looking for. And I think that's why it draws so much uh, diversity uh, because a lot of people just want to go west. The, the state is beautiful. Uh, the land is beautiful and the the weather's beautiful. Uh, so why not? Why wouldn't everybody want to go to California? Taxes. You know? I mean, obviously there's reasons people don't want to go to California, but taxes you know politics and wildfire <laughs> yeah. is a big deal gas prices yeah right, yes yeah. yeah i I always enjoy when we're out there um but you know i'm I'm not a resident you know i'm just a, a tourist at that point um so i get like i get to just enjoy my time well see it's like i, but, I only i get to go to dallas twice a year once in january once mm -hmm. in august so this january oh. it was snowing and uh, August it's going to be hot. I guarantee you that. Well, last August, I think it was, I think we, I was there when they had the first day under a hundred in like 38 days or something like that. Mm. So I'm like, I only get to go there when it's either super, super hot or freezing cold. It was negative yeah. five with wind chill on, on the first day of there this year. I'm like, That's wow. What part of Dallas, what part of Dallas are you going into? Market right downtown. Okay. Down market building. Okay. Right by Ford field but, you know, or uh, love field. Sorry. Love you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, we get to go to 
Alaska in August this year, which is like, be I've nice. never been to Alaska and it'll be nice to escape the, the Texas heat and go into Alaska. <laughs> no I'm doubt. assuming I've never been, but you got to get on a plane though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think we have like five days, like we're doing a show in Syracuse, New York. And then the next show is Alaska, which they're pretty far apart. About know? as far as they get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you could be in Miami. I guess I'd be a little further, but. Yeah. But still, how do they, I mean, are you going to be, are, do you rent gear up there? I mean, you're there. easy. You're, like we, you know, the, you know, cowbell, whatever, just load it yeah. up. But. I get, get me a piano and a couple things to shake and I'll be good to go. Yeah, yeah. And like when we do fly dates, you know, Jamie will bring his bass. Yeah. We'll bring guitars and pedal boards and whatnot, but usually rent drums um, and amps. Um, as long as you got your 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 main axe, if you will, isn't that what it's called, Jamie? Uh, I've never referred to it as an axe, but yes, I know what you're talking about. I've heard it. I've heard it referred to that. I think um, you know how to. I think you know how to play it really well to call it an axe. I, that's probably why I've never done. Oh, it. I, I that's can't probably, call that's it probably an next axe. year. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> um, like when we go to Europe, um, we'll do, you know, you'll Jamie will take his bass, he'll take his little suitcase onto the plane. <laughs> I don't um, need much. He can fit it yeah. in the bass. <laughs> That'd be pretty um, awesome. Well, you, yeah, that's like, when like, you like, need a stand-up bass, though. Ooh, never that's... in my life played one, and I, I. I will admit to my downfalls as a bass player now, but I wish I could. Unless you had to yeah, travel. Jamie and it. I's old band, we had we had to, which this is nothing against Jamie, but we did bring in, we we heard a stand up part, and I think we brought in a, a different bass player just for one part. Jamie Jamie got the rest, but uh, the stand up part, which you were like, heck you yeah, never played bring one. him in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you've never played one, there's there's no reason you need to be putting uh, your st- your stand up talent on an album because <laughs> it's another instrument. It's totally different. It's totally, yeah. A hundred percent. It's like with 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 the guys. What we did, like, do some like organ part. It's like, well, I, I've never like I know organ and piano are in the same ballpark, but you know it's a little different. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not even a bass player. Look, I started off on guitar, and nobody wanted to play bass in any of the bands I was around in high school. So I was like, you know what? I'll get a bass. But I'm a guitar player. I'm going to get a bass. And then that just turned into me just being mediocre at everything. I think you've done pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say. Oh, no, you, yeah. <laughs> you, you faked it enough, and you got a, you got a good attitude. So There you go. He's a cowbell and, and, a, and a tambourine for a living. Yeah. yeah, but he's also one of the best drummers I know. Don't let that fool you. Yeah, I know. And piano player. Well, not so yeah. much. Well, actually, I did play the other day. Um, I had double hip replacement surgery a couple months ago. So I've kind of, like, I haven't, I've just been having hip problems. So I haven't been able to, like, get behind a full kit in a while. Um, I was but ask I'm you, slowly getting back. With the, with, are you still going to be able to do the split kicks now? It's, uh... With the with the cowbell, are you gonna have to keep both feet on the ground? Haven't haven't done it in a while. Uh, yeah, both feet have been on the ground for for a minute. Um, I mean, at it, it, at one point we might try it, but you know we've we've got uh, other songs that we want to try to fit in there, and I don't want to re-injure, and <laughs> I know that they don't want me to re-injure, so uh, I think we're gonna uh, sleep on it for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That's what I figured after I mean, the surgery is kind of show you your, your uh, vulnerability. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, I don't honestly don't think I could actually do that right now because <laughs> I'm still in physical therapy and I'm trying to get my motion back and everything. Heck Although yeah. Jamie and I did play 27 holes of golf the other day. It felt pretty good. But you weren't doing split but, kicks. So, I mean, <laughs> no, no, I, I was not even rotating. <laughs> But I'm trying to like Arms using only. golf as a rehab. It's called I mean, that's really the the main reason that me and Jamie travel is so we can play golf <laughs> on days off. Not so really. which oh now I gotta ask the question. 
What's what's your favorite course so far since you've been on the road or a couple of courses? Oh. Uh, Jamie, I know Jamie's. I didn't go this day, but Jamie went twice in a row. So Yeah, my my favorite place and it was a public course which is really cool it's called redlands mesa and it was what outside of grand junction colorado or mm -hmm. something like that yeah Somewhere it was a really, really really pretty course i mean it's in a gated community and it is like the quality of a like a, a fully private course but uh all the cool elevation you would expect in colorado and just beautiful place and it's yeah redlands mesa that was my favorite course i played uh, i'll tell you you guys are gonna be at del mar fairgrounds yeah. You're gonna be is there, is there a spot? You're gonna be a driver away from Tory Pines. Okay. We we've definitely cool. played that on video game courses. That's a it's a public course. But uh oh I mean it's it's you, you should book it now. <laughs> but I didn't know that was public. I thought I mean that's a PGA course, right? Yeah, yeah. They played the uh, open there. They they had they've had the US yeah. open there and then they they play there every March, I think. On the tour, March or April. Yeah, because it, it's definitely like heck. A lot of a lot of nights will it will end the night after a show. J Jamie will be playing uh, Tiger Woods golf in the front lounge on the PlayStation Five, and I, I think Tory Pines is on there. I, de I think I'm oh, definitely seeing it right. Probably the North Course. If you're a San Diego resident, it's like twenty five dollars. I mean, it's cheap. I what? Mean, yeah, yeah. You have to have a a, a San Diego ID. But I think it's like uh, 75 or 80, well, 85. We definitely know some San Diego people. Because Jamie that? went out to the that course. Uh, was oh yeah. You went out to the like the Sills place last time, right? When we were in San yeah, Diego? Yeah, Coronado. Uh uh -huh. yeah, one of our one of our good friends, he's a SEAL. Um, he took me to the base, which was awesome. Yeah. I wanted to run the obstacle course, but I am not in that kind of shape, and I don't think it's allowed <laughs> either way. You could probably get on the Camp Pendleton course, uh, obstacle course. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying to take me out there too. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, my aunt was uh, stationed off Coronado Island for a while when I was I was like oh, teenager. Right. It was pretty cool. So, what what other so any other courses you want to you guys have thought about playing? Um, we we were up near Pebble Beach. I was in gonna say October. Um, it was literally a fly in, fly out. So we didn't like. I would love to play there. Um, you guys played... should just go to just walk around there. It's it's. I haven't played yeah, there either. Yeah, that's that's what everybody was saying. Just like go like have lunch at the clubhouse. Or, yeah, always. Oh, yeah, just just to see it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to do that. I've done. Obviously not Augusta proper, but I've done Augusta Country Club, which is right next to to the masters and it was maybe the most intimidating i've ever been or intimidated um because like it's it's pretty strict and i was like i'm i'm from a town of 800 people in texas <laughs> what am i doing here like, yeah. like i didn't like when we go out like we dress the part and we're well behaved and we have golf etiquette but it was still like it was on a different level where i was like this feels it's different it's still stuff. Um, we played one outside of Atlanta. I think I gave up after three holes. Jamie had a really good day. Um, but that was kind of one of those like courses too, where it's like super private. It's like a PGA thing. Um, yeah, sugar. You know, there's yeah. Um, it, it, yeah. That's where I shot my great, best great round course. ever. Still. Uh, no, maybe not at this point, but that was the first time I broke a hundred. There you go. There you go. Um, I, we, our home course, it's it's this country club called Webb Hill, and it's it's out in the sticks, but it's awesome because. Hey Tony, um, you're you're yeah. in a town of eight hundred. Everything's out in the sticks. Touche. It's it's the next small town that might have a thousand, <laughs> um, and it. During the week, there's nobody, there's nobody like on the course. So like yeah. we kind of have the course to ourselves and it's, it's awesome. Cause like when we are touring, we're usually gone on the weekends where when everybody's playing and then we get home and we just have free reign and it's, yeah, cool. it's, I, I love it. It's like, it's like, that's my time.
time to relax. Do you guys bring sticks with you or do you just run them when you get to a club? Both. I prefer my own because like I'm kind of a shorter guy. Um, and my clubs are they're basically like junior clubs. They're 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 cut down a lot. Um but um I mean it it like on a fly date, like I I've, I've never yeah. flown with clubs. Um I, Jamie hasn't flown with clubs. Well when we well, have I'll check room, bags, remember? Touche. You'll check your base. <laughs> uh that's because uh, it's not my hands. Touche. Um but yeah, well we we do both. Like um we took ours out I think last time we played on the road. Um but sometimes you get some really good rentals. We were in, I think, Nashville oh, yeah. one time, and and the rentals were great. Like I was like, man, I kind of want to buy these. I like when I went to Hawaii for for work. I, I just rent them. I'm not because I have to go to four different islands, you know, because it's actual. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not carrying clubs around to four islands plus the big trip. It's like I'll just rent them. And usually, especially in the clubs in Hawaii, you get really nice clubs. How how's how's golf in Hawaii? It's it, it, it's awesome. Uh, the, gra- that's, the grass. That's is, what I was expecting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, you can it depends on the course, obviously, but almost every course you're looking, you're either looking at the jungle or you're looking at the ocean. See, that's that's awesome. Golf is so hard that it doesn't really matter where I'm playing. Golf just golf is golf, and I'm going to be mad at my game either way. But if I can be mad and look at the jungle or the ocean, that's yeah, you can look I lost where they shot Lost or where they mm-hmm. shot Jurassic Park. So. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and uh, Kauai was like, Kauai is where they filmed Jurassic Park. So, I mean, that island, mm-hmm. they call it the Emerald Island. But um, on the on Oahu, they have a mongoose. So, like, you see mongoose up on the on your tea box because they're eating the, the little beads and all that. They brought them to, to kill the rats, and then they found out that mongoose eat during the day and, and rats are nocturnal, so they, they weren't doing their job. And then they just <laughs> were <laughs> got wild. I'd never seen a wild mongoose just walking in front of me, you know, on a tee box. Like, what the fuck? like yeah, okay. I've I've seen uh, lots of deer out here. Yeah, um, and like on our home course, there's like hog traps because like so many hogs out in, in our area. Uh, I could honestly say I've never seen a mongoose though. <laughs> we saw gators down. I I, I golfed down in um, Puerto Vallarta. And I, and mm. a big 10 foot gator came up right along the shore. And I'm like, Nope, don't need a ball that bad. Nope. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we, we played in Florida sometime last year. And it was like, beware of the gators. And I was like, I'm just, I'm not going down to the swamps. I don't even <laughs> want to check it. Yeah. It, I'm good. Yeah. It's lost. <laughs> Let me just drop mm-hmm. here. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't tell us to bring 24 balls that day. <laughs> now, you know, <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't we always, <laughs> Well, see, I mean, I usually take 12. Yeah. See, Jamie, I, the way I started, when I started golf, I never took a lesson, but success to me was being a, when I, when I finally played a round and I didn't lose a ball. That was... I still haven't done that. Yeah. I've actually been pretty good lately. Because, like, with... That the, is it. Go ahead, John. Sorry. Well, I'm just saying, because, like, I can't, I can't fully rotate because of my hips. So I'm yeah. just using arms. So I'm not hitting it very far, but I'm keeping it in the fairway. And I'm actually putting some of the – like, I had my first eagle um, last summer, um, and it was strictly because I was keeping everything in the fairway. Um, So, yeah, I'm, like, losing less balls and playing better golf with double hip replacement. (laughs) Should have had it years ago. I might be on to something. Exactly. (laughs) That's how my mom – my mom used to, she'd hit 125 yards dead straight. Didn't matter yeah. if it was, you know, her six iron or, or, or driver. So whenever we would play, she, she, I'd let her hit her driver, but then we would play from where my ball went. And then she would play from the rest of the way in. That way we went slowly yeah. down behind us. But she was dead straight, just about 100 yards, 125 yards. Oh, yeah. And we, we love to scramble, you know. So it's like, yeah, yeah, scramble's awesome. Jamie, I mean, I – He's a tall, skinny guy. Um, I mean, that's just kind of given. I'm not talking crap, James, but he'll he'll smoke it like 
over 300 yards. Like it's, it's like, he's got one of the longest drives I've ever seen. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, so it, it's good to have that as a scramble. It's going to be in the woods in one direction. Though. No, no. <laughs> a lot of times you'll hit right in the, right in the middle. Your, your second shot isn't always the greatest, but. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's, it's never. I don't think I've ever. Road. I don't think I've ever had a drive like that, and then followed up with a good second shot ever. <laughs> it's coming. It happened. Torrey Pines. Yeah. I'm Let's in. Let's do it. I'm down. No I don't know if we have days off, but even if you just get to go to the driving range. Yeah. It's a pretty range. Last time we were in L.A., Jamie went. It was a show day, and Jamie went and played. Uh, I, I I can't really do show day plays anymore just it just wears me out but um i think jamie found out that being in an uber that long in la is not the best for going to play a show that night. no it was it was tough because you know it, i i just not familiar with that kind of yeah there's a lot of traffic here in dfw in texas but like out there uh, i went and play it was early round and the the place was only like I don't know. When you look at mileage, to me, it was going to take 30 minutes. It took to us an mileage. hour, hour and 45 minutes to get back. Yeah. Um, and it, it was, it was stressful. And I was like carrying my clubs in, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned last minute, I mean, it wasn't right before the show, but I like to get, get in and get ready and woo saw for a little bit before I've got to play. And it was me scrambling to get off the, off the golf course into an Uber take that long drive and uh yeah it was just it's rough I'm, I'm not doing that again yeah that i don't remember the course yeah, i played it was it was in a valley and it was windy and i it was also a very very hard course but, dfw I, I i personally don't like driving around dfw i get lost too easy the gps doesn't st- stay up with the uh, the, the all right. bottle turns and everything else i end up going towards you know fort worth and i'm like I don't want to be going towards Fort Worth right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, I'm from DFW, and I don't like driving in so DFW. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I like That's driving in my small town of 800. <laughs> yeah. See, I can't even imagine. My, my daughter's high school has 2,300 people, I think. 2,300 kids. Yeah. Uh, it's, and there's three other. There's literally three other high schools within five miles of me. Yeah. Well, our, uh, I graduated 29. Our <laughs> singer graduated with nine, like single digits. Yeah. Uh, J- Jamie went to a pretty, pretty big high school. Uh, how many did you have, Jamie? Uh, my class was four, four fifty something. That's not, not that's, crazy, that's, but it, it's that's, not that's, nine. That's or not 2300. Like, that's that's yeah. crazy. I've never even heard a class that big. That's that's wild. Well, that's yeah. Like I said, there's literally, and that's Redondo, but uh, South Torrance is closer to me, but it's a different city. So. Yeah. And then West Torrance is we. They used to walk. Uh, my daughter's played lacrosse. They used to walk from Redondo High to West Torrance High because it was so close. Hmm. Yeah. But, and they you know a couple thousand kids there too. Yeah, I, I like. That's crazy to think about. Um, yeah, that's why uh, Baylor was such a. I went to Baylor in college, and it's like that's in Texas, um, in Waco, which is close to where Jamie lives now. Yeah. Um, and it was, yeah, it was just kind of culture shock, you know, because I've always seen the same people every day for since I was in third grade. Um, and I was I was very green and whatnot then. Uh, I've I've been out and and seen some things since then, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess I always uh, have a little bit of small town in me. Like where I'm at right now, uh, at my dad's, which is also the community where my girlfriend lives. It's also a golf course. Um, there's like twenty three hundred people, and I'm like, gosh. It's a community. It's way bigger than the town I grew up in. You know, I can't. Yeah, I've never lived in a well, never lived in a place that small. I lived in Lake Tahoe for for one one winter, but oh, rad! Yeah, I love Lake Tahoe. It's rad. I was twenty. What was I? Twenty three. 
It was a good. It was a good winter. Yeah. That was, that you was ski good. and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. I, we when you live up there. Uh, so my my dad's best friend did the phone systems for Heavenly, and so mm -hmm. he got a free. He got a couple of free passes for a whole year. So he gave me one of them. So it was literally like I'd get done with work and just go on the hill for two hours and ski and then just be done for the day. Heck yeah. Yeah. Because if you're not paying three hundred dollars for a lift ticket, you don't mind going for yeah. a couple hours. Well, that's what like out here, uh, where I've been staying, like, you know, well, uh, my girlfriend lives on the golf course. So, you know, at the end of the day, we'll just go out and hit yeah. a couple of holes, you know? Um, and it's awesome. Um, I thought about like going out there and just like hitting balls, like, well, people are like between groups, you know, cause I could literally just walk there. <laughs> like Jay Jamie came over last, last weekend and was like, can we go play this hole? Because we were just watching golfers all day. It's like we ended up not. We probably should have, but there's always next time. Yeah. But you're gonna be on tour for coming up in what two weeks and a week and a half. Yeah, you want to come out for Easter, Jamie? We'll go play golf. Uh I don't know when that I don't know when anything is. That's yes. Yes. whatever you, whatever you want me to do, but I'm 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 on board. Actually, we're we're supposed to play Friday, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, wow. we look at us making plans on a podcast. <laughs> I know <laughs> that's, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I barely, I barely seen you in like a month now. <laughs> yeah, I just recently moved. Tony and I stayed together for a long time. Just uh, we're both, you know, we don't have children and um, not married or whatnot, and uh, we've known each other for a long time, and even before we were in the band together, and uh, it just kind of made sense for us to stay together. Uh, you know, during the during our the the more recent years and I just for the first time built my own my own little tiny home so I moved moved away and it's kind of bittersweet I love uh love having my own place but also miss my bud touche I miss you I ain't gonna lie did you literally buy a uh, build a, a tiny house yep yep 390 square feet that's cool it's a mess I can't believe I just showed you that that's okay <laughs> I, I haven't seen it yet though yeah, well, it's still fresh. I still need a couch for you to sleep on. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I I live on a I have an RV that I travel in when I go up north and when I when I'm traveling around. So I always tell people it's like it's different living on a bus, you know. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm um, accustomed to. I'm kind of used to that. I was gonna before I built the tiny home. I was gonna get an RV too, but I'm so I'm not really mechanically inclined, and I feel like there's so many things you got to know to have one of those to be able to take care of it. Um, and I, I just, I drive around so much. I'm not just going to tote, tote my uh, RV around with me. So I just make my tiny home, leave it here. I'm only here a couple of days a week. I drive up to DFW basically every week um, just to see friends and uh, whatnot. But, yeah. No, well, that's the way. I mean, a, a lot of people, I, I interviewed uh, Wee Man from Jackass. And, yeah. And he lived uh, in a van that. for like three years or two years. He lived in a sprinter van and he would just travel around and go to skate shops and skate, skate places. And, and yeah. I, I was told him, it's like, when I started living in the RV and traveling, and I was like, you got to be good with tools. Like, yeah, you, mm -hmm. you're going to be fixing some because you got a house on wheels. It's like everything's moving, shaking, bumping, grinding. Oh, yeah. So it takes you, a certain type of it takes a certain type of person to embrace that uh, lifestyle for sure. Yeah. And, and, and he was he was in a sprinter van. And so it was very much in and out, you know, it's like, it was very easy for him. Mm -hmm. Did it have like the bathroom and everything? Yeah. Mine's got a full bath. His had a small bathroom. Like, yeah, a, cause I, we, we, no we shower, it like a sprinter. Yeah. Like, I, I guess the back part, remember in college station, Jamie, that they picked us up in that, uh, in that sprinter and had a bathroom in the back. I was like, I've never seen. Oh yeah. That was a sprinter. Cool. It's really nice. Yeah, that was that was like the most luxurious sprinter I've ever seen. Yeah, it, yeah, it was tall. Like <laughs> yeah, so they, they make them all different. And then um, mine's an RV. So it's on a it's on a Mercedes Sprinter chassis, but uh, it's a little bit longer. The wife wanted a real bathroom, so had to yeah, bigger. yeah. Me and me and Jamie, we uh, we traveled in an RV for a little while, um, and. It's nice to have some like like walk around room and like yeah you know, but even like we we got a new 
we got a new bus last year and it's there's still like it, it's just like stuff isn't meant to be run all the time and on the road so i mean there's going to be problems here and there um but i mean it's it's still a pretty pretty nice way to travel yeah i figured i i'd I use it more of a, as a tax base too you know yeah. versus giving everything to hilton and then having nothing at the end of it yeah and yeah. you you get that you get that comfort of like it, it's your like home you know yeah i get to eat what i want i you know i bring my own food and because i was gonna ask you is like yeah when, when you're on a tour bus with five to six seven eight guys you know and you, I'm, I'm assuming you're in the in the uh the bunk beds and mm -hmm. how, how does uh food go along with that does anybody have special diets or not really and we we probably need to grocery shop more um we usually well so so we have like three meals a day catering which most of us don't go to all of them and then we get after show food yeah um but i mean it's, it, it comes up sometimes somebody will put something in the fridge and then somebody else might get hungry late at night and and eat something you know and then there's a little little discussion like hey you ate you ate my stuff <laughs> but everybody's pretty respectful yeah you, you and uh, your I guess names on, on, on bags and bottles and stuff yeah no everybody knows who's 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 <laughs> yeah i guess you get to that point at the night you don't care you're just hungry <laughs> yeah, yeah well that's what i'm asking i mean like you're literally living with guys you know five or six seven people i mean i don't know how many people yeah. on your bus but I think we got we got seven on ours. Yeah. Um, and tighter yeah, quarters. It's, yeah, but uh, we used to. I think before we went to two buses, which now this year we got three, which is just even crazy. Like it's crazy to think about. But we used to be on one bus with one trailer, and there'd be twelve of us on there, including a driver. Um, that was very tight quarters, you know, but it was fun. Cause it's like, you know, like you're hanging out with your buddies. Like it's like, you're going to summer camp, you got uh bunk beds and you know, it's, it's like summer camp with no adults. I guess, I guess we're supposed to be the adults, but. <laughs> Were you flipping coins who got the couch or who got the bed or. No, we had 12 bunks, but. Okay. So everybody had their own bunk, but. Um, yeah. It, it, it's, 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 it's pretty fun. I'm I'm glad we we're kind of spread out now because it it does get a little tight, you know, especially on like travel days where it's like there'll be a certain amount of people in the front lounge and a certain amount of people in the back lounge, and it just it just gets tight and like sometimes it's like well I guess I'll just go lay in my bunk because it just it feels like there's there's not enough room. Um, I, I I can tell why Jamie had the uh, the little breakdown in in Morro Bay, so I, I can imagine it gets. <laughs> gets to you once in a while where you just want to get out and go for a walk right yes absolutely yeah. and like we we all get along with each other really well but, but still yeah i mean sometimes you, you you just need your space like um yeah it, it's just good to like go on for a walk or you know days off now we get we get our own uh hotel rooms which goes a long way too just yeah. like as much as we love and get along with each other like sorry sorry jamie but i i just don't want to see you today <laughs> or i'll see you tonight hey, man. But... well it's funny whenever we were uh when we were i was staying i was staying with you more uh more often we were living and working together and it was like we didn't get a break from each other and then we were also staying in the same hotel room when we would stay out of town so it was like yeah. we literally didn't get a break from each other that being said we never really fought or nothing but it's like man i just kind of want to be alone for a little bit which is it's why it's so hard for me to keep like I've, I've got a girlfriend right now too but it's so hard for me to keep one because i really like to be alone it's one of my favorite things in the world and uh yeah. just be like i'm able to to zone out and that's how i recharge is being by myself um so yeah yeah sometimes you just gotta have those walks you get out there and go for a walk usually you and i'll go walk for a walk now and we'll go go out to eat even though we have catering and get two meals to go because we we don't know if we're going to like catering. Yeah. And then leave it in the fridge and then our best and then leave it in the fridge. 
<laughs> take it home and you go home with a whole week's worth of leftover food. Leftovers. Yeah. But the, the yeah. don't last. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I do the same thing like when I'm at the rodeo. It's like, you know, 16, 17 days in a row with the same people. And you're like, and then I'm talking to yeah. five to 10,000 people a day, depending on how many people come to our booth. Uh, so at yeah. night, there are people are like, hey, let's go out and this and that. And I'm like, oh, I'll see you guys later. I just, and I'll, I'll just put on my walking shoes, take my, my cowboy boots off and put some walking shoes on, and just go for a walk down the strip and not talk to anybody. I don't want to talk, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I just come back but, and they're like, what did you do last night? I'm like, I did put not. Put the hood up and just like, don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then there's other nights. I mean, I, last uh, two years ago, I saw Shane Smith and the Saints. I mean, there, there's almost always good music, George Strait. Uh, Luke Bryan, Carrie Underwood, you know, because we get, you yeah. get passes, you know. We sponsor Cowboy Troy, and he plays with Big and Rich, so. Oh, it's all he was on. He was on the podcast, too, I've right? had him on twice. He's a friend of mine now, but, I mean, I've known him for 14, 15 years, so. Yeah. Yeah, he was the one that gave me advice on how to do a podcast. I'd never recorded myself. So he's like, me, have, have water, you know. Yeah. You know, all this me me and Jamie are. tried. I think we did a, a, a pilot episode one time. Um, do you still have that recording? Yeah, it's we did it in a in a car as we were driving. Um, so it wasn't the greatest. But the problem, what I've learned, I've tried to do two or three podcasts of my own now. And the problem is you got to have like some kind of content. You can't just, you can't BS your way through it. Otherwise it gets boring. Um, nobody wants to hear you. I don't know, some, maybe I'm wrong, but... Um, you're dead you gotta right. have some kind of planned like notes uh something to talk about talking yeah. points or something and otherwise you're just sit there and stumble over whatever you're trying to get through the average podcast uh they fade out they call it pod fade they last seven episodes <laughs> the average podcaster lasts seven episodes because that's, you know that's... if you think about it if you talk six or seven eight hours then what do you got left yeah 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 Got to figure out a way to keep it going. That's why I interview people. That way I don't have to come up with it. No one yeah. wants to hear me anyway. So interview cool oh, people. I couldn't imagine doing it like, like by yourself, like talking like to yourself. Or like, a lot of people. I mean, I've, I've definitely heard some and they're like, you know, some of them are like kind of interesting, but it's like, oh, it gives me anxiety thinking about it. Like, But if, like if you were talking about uh, how to play the bass, and you know whether it's plucking or or, or 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 hitting, you know, I mean, you could do that for a couple of hours, probably. Even if you got twenty or thirty hours in, you'd still like at a certain point, you're like, yeah. "Who's going to listen to that? Other bass yeah. players?" <laughs> I mean, exactly. Yeah, and so I would that, never, I would never talk about how to play bass because I don't feel like I know how to play bass. So, yeah, you're like, 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 yeah. You know, but you're always comparing, you're comparing yourself to Flea or Getty or something, right? It's like... Touche. You know. There are people that go to your shows. I always talk about this because, like, I interviewed Maxi Priest. He's a reggae singer. And obviously, okay. he grew up loving Bob Marley. And he saw Bob Marley live. And he goes, it just was my inspiration. And I said, well, you are now that guy. Because young people, teenagers, are going to your shows and watching you perform. And you're inspiring them. So in 40 years... They're going to be using Maxi Priest. That's a good point. I got to not yeah. discredit that. Yeah. So, I mean, um, do we know Maxi? What's that? Jamie's a big reggae guy. Okay. Oh, no. Just... I'm not familiar. I'm not a big name guy. I am a big reggae guy. Reggae guy. I'm actually wearing a reggae shirt. Yeah. I love him. I Tara. Do you, you, uh, you know Cass Haley? I don't know. I know who that is. I, I'm not uh, too familiar with him, though. He's a Texas guy, born and raised. Yeah, in he Texas. was on. Wasn't he on American Idol or something? Uh, no, not American. Uh, America's Got Talent. That's all right. Okay. And so, but he does reggae conversions. So, he, like, he just did Chicken Fried. He did. I mean, he came out the whole album of converting his classic country songs into reggae reggae themes. That's cool, man. I actually wanted to do the same thing with classic rock. Um, you know, take some Eagle songs, take some Creedence songs, uh, Skinner songs, and like turn them into reggae. A lot of people are have done it and are still doing it. Um, there's a band, I think they're called the Easy A All Stars. I, I forgot, but they do like a whole album. They do Yellow Dubarine. It's uh, a whole yeah, Beatles cool. album. 
they do uh dub side of the moon which is a whole pink floyd dark side of the moon reggae album <laughs> um they do it like full uh radiohead they do the the creep album i forgot the name of that one but they do the whole album in reggae songs it's it's really cool there, there's um it, i'll have to say there's a, a thing's called the punk factory they do punk rock conversions of all disney songs that's awesome too oh, that's, yeah, they're that's like full-on punk songs you're like hold on i know this song my daughter you know it's like it's pretty cool i love that that's cool man it's something familiar that everybody's like why do i know this but it's like cooler than i remember it I like it. The ver his version of Chicken Fried is is better. Not I don't know about better than Zach Brown, but it's good. I'll have to listen to it. I, as I said, as a reggae fan, I mean, you could turn any any song that I've never liked in the past into a reggae song, and I'll probably dig it. He uh, he did Tennessee Whiskey. He did the uh, uh, reggae version of that. So he took, and then he took some. Uh, nine, I can't remember all. But it's, it's a good album. It's, he just came out uh, about a year ago. Well, cool. I'll definitely go check it out. Yeah. I, I I watch a lot of reggae too, so yeah. like uh like the modern modern reggae bands. Uh no, Third World, oh. Steel Pulse. Oh uh, yeah, dude. Inner Circle. Steel Pulse is actually Steel Pulse is fixing to come to uh Dallas and I'm dying to go. I'm off and I've never seen them. And they are one of the Santa wow. Barbara Bowl where you guys are playing. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, they're coming to Granada, Tony, which is a small mm -hmm. venue for them. Yeah. Well they they, they played a uh Played a little little festival in um Berkeley one year and I went and saw him like ninety one or ninety two. Oh, that was their heyday. That was I mean, yeah, yeah. they're I think they're one of the, probably the I don't know they, I won't say most influential because a lot of people doesn't know they don't know who Still Pulse is, but to me I think they're one of the best at what they did. I don't think anybody's been as good as Still Pulse. Yeah, you know, it, it you're right though. I mean, if you think about it, it's like they, and they've influenced so many so many bands. And yeah. the band since. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. It, you know. I think Bob Marley is probably influenced the most, but yeah, everybody knows who Bob Marley is, and you don't even have to know you like reggae to like Bob Marley. Yeah. Well, then uh, I got Julian Marley supposed to be coming on my show pretty soon, so I'm just. He's been. He just won the Grammy, so he's been busy. Very oh, nice. cool. Yeah, yeah. No, so that's that's the thing I like about the podcast. Like I get to talk to you guys, and then. Steve Stevens and you know Steve Steve actually wrote my um during COVID he was they weren't touring so Steve did the guitar part of my of my theme song oh, oh nice cool. I was just like hey so what do you think and he's like well send me what you got and it was a Friday night and I'm like so my daughter did did the bass tracks I don't know anything about music and he's like well yeah let me let me play with it and like the next morning he sends me back this track and I'm like oh okay then that's it Heck thank yeah. you <laughs> I don't it's awesome yeah so. Are there any venues that you guys are like, God, I can't like maybe the Hollywood bowl with whiskey or, or is there, are there any venues that you're just really wanting to, to hit up? Uh, I would definitely like to do Hollywood bowl with whiskey. Um, there's a venue. It hasn't been announced yet, but there's a venue. I think we're playing this year. Um, that's like a bucket list venue. For me and Jamie, because we grew up going to see shows there, that I think we're we're gonna get to headline. Um, and I, is it called the Gorge or something like the Pacific Northwest? Up in Seattle, like really like, yeah, like like somewhere up there that I've I've seen pictures and it looks it looks awesome. Um, Have you guys played the a different YouTube rodeo? I'm sorry. Have you guys hit the, the Houston rodeo? We did it. I actually got my Yeti. Is, yeah, there it is. We we did it uh, two weeks ago for the first time. Yeah. That was pretty rad. Yeah, yeah that's funny because I've never actually, I didn't know anything about Houston rodeo and how big it was. And I didn't think anything of it. As we're getting into it, I started realizing everybody's making a big deal out of like our my my friends and family and then people in the band everybody's kind of making comments that makes me go wait this is a bigger deal than i thought it's not just a normal <laughs> show yeah. and we get there and i'm like what what you know our name's next to bun b and the jonas brothers like this, yeah. this is weird <laughs> well that's a, you know, that, that's the thing about the, the houston rodeo a lot of the rodeos even here in california like you'll get rock guys and then 38 special and you'll get you know 
just random people at different at all the fairs and all that the state mid state fairs and all that. Del Mar is going to be like that for you guys. Yeah. Um, and like we've done so many rodeos over the years. It's like yeah. name some random town in Texas. We're going to do the rodeo and like thousand people, you know. So uh, yeah, I think that like not trying to speak for Jamie, but it was just like oh, it's just another another rodeo, you know. Yeah, but and then, good. yeah, it, like we 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 walked in there to sound check. It's like, whoa, I guess it's pretty big. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was cool, stressful day, but it was really cool. What makes it what makes it stressful? Just the logistics of everything, or people, uh, guests? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, guests. I'll speak for him. I'll say what makes it stressful is whenever we play these local like semi or either big shows or semi local shows. What makes it stressful to me is whenever we have family and friends coming out, because I feel like we have to cater like to entertain them. Um, and what they don't realize is that we're, we are actually just trying to do our job and, and perform to the best of our ability and make sure everything works as smoothly as possible and also at the same time, I feel obligated to make sure that they're taken care of, which really shouldn't be my job. Um, even though it's my own mother or somebody yeah. coming out, it's like, mom, I love you to death, but I can't, I can't make sure you're taken care of today. I'm, that's going to be put in somebody else's hands, uh, which I just need to do that because I still make it my job to take care of them. And I shouldn't have to, because the, the, like the Houston rodeo it gets more complicated. You know, the smaller the shows, it's easier for me to go. Yeah. I got you. No problem. But Houston rodeo or shows like that, like Red Rocks, we do Red Rocks too. And some of that stuff. And it's like, it's just more, it's, it's more difficult for me or any of us to go get our family or make sure they have their passes or, or whatever it is. So those days when they're all there, I'm just, I'm in a, I'm a stress ball and I don't really want to deal with any of it. I love being out of town where nobody comes, like none of our friends and family come because it's, it's just, I don't stress. I love playing music and I like being on stage and uh, our, our quote unquote jobs are really cool, but it's these local shows and big shows that what our friends and family want to come. That just kind of drives me bonkers. Then I, they all know I love them. So I'm not afraid of them hearing me say that, but. What? <laughs> Dude, it's just, I, I mean, I can relate when I go to the rodeo, I have friends that want to come in town. Hey, can you give me tickets to the rodeo? Hey, give me tickets to Luke Bryan or give me tickets to George Strait. And I'm like, oh, George Strait. You know, it's like, what are you yeah. talking about? I'm like, I work every day. It's like, yeah, so I, I, I get it. They're like, what time you get off? I'm like, dude, I, I just got off, I just worked, you know, my 12th straight day. Yeah. I don't want to go out. And I took off. What do you mean? My, like, my, like, still... yeah. my pre show, like, routine, I usually I'll take a nap before the show and I'll be like, usually try to wake up about 30 minutes before the show and get dressed and get dialed in and like get my mind right and everything. But like, um, because waiting around like to go on, like that's the longest part of the day. So I try to keep it as short as possible. That's why I set my alarm for 30 minutes and I get dressed, um, do my stretching and all that stuff. Um, and when, when you got people coming out, like yeah. you do feel obligated to to go say hello and to to hang and whatnot. Um, so it just kind of throws like, like it just kind of throws off your routine, um, which I, I think like we've been doing it long enough. Like we could still go up and like once we're on stage, it's good yeah, to go. yeah, it's game time. You know, it's like it's like I guess riding a bike at that point. Um, but it's the the time leading up to that that that. I can uh, cure your be... problems, both of you guys. You ready? Yep. Yeah. You know Lorraine Lewis, right, Tony? Yeah. She's the lead singer of Vixen. She was the lead singer of Femme Fatale. She's been... Oh, Lorraine. Yeah, yeah. 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 Show day, she doesn't talk. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't talk. <laughs> yeah. She wants to save her voice. So, she, so when people, when you do a meet and greet or whatever, she's just like... She has a little notepad and says, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. See, so no one will want to hang out with you if you don't talk to them. <laughs> yeah. But no one could read my writing on the notepad, but <laughs> I could get a translator, I guess. 
or just have a, a pre typed out note. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be rude, but that's what she does. Yeah. So there yeah, you go. That, yeah. No, your but family be like, oh, he doesn't talk to me on show day, so I don't want to go. <laughs> yeah. That's not trying to be rude, but yeah, that's got a job to does. do. <laughs> Well, give it a shot and see. I don't know. It might not work for a bass player percussionist, but well, I like no. It worked for apparently uh, Houston. So my mom and my grandmother came out to Houston rodeo, and apparently it worked for them because my mom told me after we get back, she goes, "You know what? I'm not going to any more of your shows. You stress out too much." I'm like, "Good, thanks." Then it worked. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not that I didn't talk to him. I think I was just high strung, and they were like, "I don't like seeing you like that." I'm like, cool. I don't like being like that either. I. It's interesting. It, it was golf. a busy day. Yeah, I mean, I went to the uh, the media days for for the Super Bowl, and uh, mm-hmm. just to meet some people and do all, do all that. And they're all working. Like you go there, yeah. like it, it's literally everybody. It's oh, there's Joe Montana, there's Terrell Owens, oh, there's you know Pat McAfee and Dana White, and but they're all working. It's like they're not mm-hmm. there to meet and greet fans. They're like going from the Sports Illustrated to Westwood One to CBS to you know. And I yeah. don't people understand, they're like, oh, you get to talk to them? I'm like, no, they're working. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, at the Houston Rodeo, Jamie and I went out and did a, like a, like a, I, I guess a meet and greet fan meetup thing for Miller Lite. We're endorsed by Miller Lite. And, um, I think it's supposed to be like a 20 minute thing. It's like, yeah, absolutely. You know, we'll do it. And then it kept getting more and more. Um, and then there were like kids showing up and, you know, they're trying to shut it down and there's a line full of kids and it's like, we're not going to say no to kids. Like, yeah. no, we'll, 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 like, I'm not that busy, you know, like, of course, like, we'll do whatever we need to do, you know. So, I mean, we are, like, we, we could be pretty good in those situations. It, it's the, once you get, like, ready to go on and you got people texting and whatnot. It's like, Hey, where do I go? And all this, it's like, that's when it's like stressful. It's like, I don't even know where to tell you to go. Like, I don't know how to pick up the tickets. You know, like, I give them our assistant tour managers to uh, phone number. And that's where I tell them to go. Oh, should I give it to it right now? <laughs> yeah. Give it out on air. For least anybody number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's our assistant tour managers number. If you ever need me, call him. I had I had Maxi Priest start giving me his, his his cell number on the on the call. And I'm like, no, 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 no we're recording. <laughs> I'm like, don't do that. I go, you do well, not. I, I could give you, I could give, I could give uh, everybody Jamie's number, and it wouldn't matter anyway because he's not going to respond. <laughs> I'm the worst. It happens. Yeah. That's 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 why you don't like your your friends and family. No, I love my friends and family. No, I mean, I show days. About on show days. <laughs> you don't want to respond to your phone anyways, much less that much. Yeah. I got you. Right. Yeah, actually, so, it's just, actually, sometimes you just got to call Jamie. Since I, I'm sorry. I would just say sometimes you just got to call Jamie. Like, I'm yeah. not even going to bother texting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely a, a thing. <laughs> a thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, this is kind of a new thing uh, for me, like, but it, I guess when I started the band, um, I've always kind of been overwhelmed with little things. And then once I started playing with Whiskey Myers, uh, which was in 2017, um, and, you know, the the messages from the woodwork started coming in more often than not, you know. Um, and it just it just to me, it became overwhelming because I don't know, I'm a simple I'm a simple person um, and I'm very slow when it comes to how I respond to certain things. And uh, yeah, it was just, I'd start, I'd get multiple messages on show days about getting tickets or whatnot. And I just got to the point where instead of apologizing to every message, I just kind of started ignoring people, which I, I know that's not nice or cool. And it makes me sound like a, an a-hole, but um, you know, if I don't hear from you all year long and then all of a sudden you want tickets, I'm probably not going to respond to you. Uh, I'm with you on that. So then, they, then they call me. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Sorry, oh, it's all good. I can't. I can't have any unread. My OCD kicks in, so I got to respond to everything. So. Well, does it? Is it? Hey, I've been trying to get a hold of Jamie. <laughs> have you seen him? <laughs> He's got those. Yeah, he's literally think for my own dad. He was like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, I got your dad's number saved now." Only when uh, he's to reach you. 
I'm not making myself sound very good here, but that's all right. It is what it is, man. I mean, hey, yeah. I was going to ask you, is it weird? You know, because I ask a lot of the, the cowboys are like this that I, that we that I know. You know, during the rodeo, they're super famous, and people want their autograph and buy my beer or this and that. But then, like, you can go the other 350 days, and they're just guys everywhere else. Is that kind of? I mean, like, you go to Houston, you're signing an autograph, but then, like, you're really just a normal guy still. Yeah. Is it weird for you? Yeah, guys? we. Yeah, we were just talking about that last weekend when we were hanging out because I think we. We forget that because um, so, we still see ourselves as regular people, one hundred percent. And I think what what happens is a lot of people forget that, like one, we don't want to admit that we're what. And I, I just say a successful band, but some people would call us. Uh, I hate saying this, but some people would call us uh, celebrities or whatever, or famous, and that makes me cringe with the words coming out of my mouth. But we forget that that's how some people view us, and yeah. it makes their their entire sometimes their entire year or or decade whenever we just stop and talk to them and sign an autograph and take a picture, you know. Um, and to me, that was nothing. I'm happy to do that. Um, I say I don't answer my phone sometimes, but I'm more than happy to go out and talk to people when it comes to that that situation. Um, and Tony, Tony's usually right there with me when we do that. Yeah, yeah, but it, like, like, like you were saying, it was uh, if if we're close, like, let's say we're in town playing a show and we're walking around, we might get people might know us. But like, if I'm going out to the to buy shoes or something around here, I mean, I, I'm definitely not getting stopped. You know? Yeah, it's like, that's what I mean. I don't, yeah, like. It's uh, it's if people know that we're in town and they're like they're fans and like right. we're around the venue, like you know. But I, it's yeah, in everyday life, like no, that doesn't have it. It unless like like around the small towns that you know we live. You know, I had a, for example, I had a, a uh, I was walking around, um. I had a physical therapist come over at a at home visit and um, we're walking around the house and cause he's like trying to see how, how I walk. Um, and we walk by the music room and he looks in and there's a, there's a, a whiskey Myers uh, poster. And he's like, Oh, you like whiskey Myers? I was like, yeah. Yeah. They're okay. Um, and he's like, I heard a, a few of them live around here. It's like, well, you're one of their houses right now. And he's like, hold on, what? So like, I mean, he was in my house and like had no clue. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I because I, I, I uh, Troy, Cowboy Troy, when he comes out, we'll hang out for the day, and he's just Troy. But then, like, we went to dinner one time at, during the rodeo in, in Vegas, and you just forget, and all of a sudden, people are like, drinks are showing up at our table. Yeah. Like going on like oh that 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 table over there wanted to buy him a, a, a round i'm like oh, that's right you're you're cowboy troy here yeah yeah but all the other days he's just troy you know he's just yeah absolutely so I, I, i'm always curious how that that affects people because like george Strait's george Strait. you know what i mean oh yeah every he, day he's been of the famous week, for 40 years he goes, like, i interviewed yeah. emmett smith emmett smith's been famous since he was in high school he was high school player of the year so it's like 40 years of being famous. I, I get that there's, you know, he yeah. literally can't go anywhere, but. Oh, I it's would a, be it's bothering a, him if I saw him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a I'm wonder sorry. what a, a hoodie and a, a ball cap and some glasses will do too, though, if you're out in that situation. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's fine. It's pretty funny because I, there's some people that, that I, cause I live in LA. So I see people and I'm like, some people are trying to look famous. Yeah. You know? Oh, like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we know who you are. Like, all right, we get it. I won't even name names. <laughs> yeah. but, but then there's just, uh, most of them are just walking around. Yeah. You know, going like, shopping, I used whatever. To, when, when I lived in New York, I used to see Keanu Reeves all the time, like at the local bar. Like, I mean, we knew who he was because, like, we were there all the time. It's like, he's incognito you know it's like i mean he definitely had a vibe so it's like this guy's somebody he's like oh yeah. shoot he grew his beard out and he's got long hair now you know 
Um, but yeah, he wasn't trying to be like, everybody look at me, you yeah. know? Yeah. My, I think most people, I don't know. I mean, like, you know, Steve, uh, Stevens, black hair, you know, he's always, he's, he's always got his vibe, you know? I mean, he's yeah. big, big Billy Idol, Billy, you know, you see Billy, it's like, been famous yeah. like 45 years, whatever. Uh, yeah, we, we definitely don't have that, that look. <laughs> I got, I got one last I got a couple questions but how many southern do you consider yourself a country band southern rock band just a rock band how do y'all can see it the best rock way i've heard it yeah yeah so the best way i've heard it described is our merch guy west was like just east texas boys playing rock and roll because we're always going to have a little bit of country just because so, so you are of our accents and where we're from you know um but we like i mean yeah i mean we were rock and roll at the end of the day i mean that's, I, I think so i agree i mean it's it, I, I don't know it's weird because like the allman brothers leonard skinner they're they're, yeah. they're still the rock but they're like they're just rock bands 38 specials yeah. top but, yeah i mean at the end of the day i mean they're from the south but they're they're rock and roll yeah or that's the way i see it you know do you, do you, how many? I mean, that legitimizes that legitimizes Southern rock. I mean, it's just a rock and roll band, but they're from the South, so there's that certain twang to 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 what they have. So, I mean, you know, Southern rock is a real thing, and yeah, that's probably yeah. what we'd be, what we are. Well, I mean, you got you know the red dirt, and you got all the different subcategories that everyone wants to put people into. But so I didn't know if you guys cared or not. It's like just keep playing our music. Okay, they, yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of hard to put us in a box you know so, yeah you know I mean, it's well, funny how many times i've heard i've heard somebody say i don't like country music I, I don't think i'd like you guys i'm like well that's cool i mean you don't have to listen at all but i promise you we're not country music yeah we got the ch country twang but and every single one of those yeah. people have come back and bought all of our albums or come out to the shows and like oh i was wrong but yeah we get lumped in with country and it's fine that means we're just across the board i love it I agree. Yeah, I mean, we we can go play. Uh, man, we did this uh, several times last year. We'll go play like a a top top forty country, um, top forty country festival, and we are a little bit out of place there. Um, but then we'll go play a rock and roll festival where, like, we were on right before Weezer. And you mean what about the awesome. metal show we played in Europe with like? Oh, I mean, yeah, it was it was a metal it was a metal yeah. festival, and here's Whiskey Myers in the middle of it. It was great. Yeah, that but, was the but did Tony break out Wonderwall there? That's what I need to know. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> we weren't we weren't uh, we were in in the UK, but we weren't close enough to Manchester to pull out Oasis. <laughs> That would be more it was cool being that was our biggest show, and it was a what 120,000 people. Our show, it was obviously That's not our show, but a hundred thousand people still, and i've never like, seen never seen that many people like looking out like vertigo said it in like immensely but to like be our second song into the set and see this texas flag i'm on the other side of the world it's my first time overseas and see this texas flag come up out of the, the audience i was like yes yeah, this is was, cool man yeah that was that was really cool but yeah we didn't belong i mean we're a, a country southern rock band and here we are at a metal show like who were the headliners? I forgot. Like it was, I mean, it was, it Mellor, was Marilyn Brady. Manson. Uh, no, that was the other one, but uh, that was in France. But oh. for, for the one you're talking about, that was it was Guns N' Roses. Oh, okay. Um, but then they put us like we we did a show, uh, just us and the Rolling Stones, you know, and that's rock and yeah. roll. I mean, that's as big as it gets, you know. And like then you got a, us East Texas boys playing soldier field in chicago opening for the stones and it was that was like a, you know people ask was that on your bucket list nope didn't know didn't know that that opportunity existed yeah and then we're like hey do y'all want to open for the stones like, yes yep. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely even if do you're at any time super... <laughs> how many how many southern brock country band rock bands have percussionists as a, as a as a band well, so I, I think it was the almond brothers they had a second drummer yeah, yeah um which i think that was kind of the idea at first but like i just got a hold of some percussion stuff and just like i just never 
let it go, which I'm, I'm a drummer. Like that, that's how I grew up like playing drums. And yeah. so I, I didn't know what, like, I mean, I maybe played some tambourines here and there. Like if we had to do like some overdubs um, on an album, it's like, it just kind of happened, you know? And like, we're like, I have added little pieces of the drums here and there, but yeah, at the end of the day with the whiskey, I'm, I'm, I'm I play percussion, you know? Yeah. It, um, you the, the, the piano player for him. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, there's just not a lot of rock bands that have that, that side of it. I don't think. Yeah. I, it just kind of happened by accident. <laughs> it's kind of like Shane Smith, right? With the fiddle player. It's like, just you you don't get a lot of standout fiddle players yeah it makes her yeah makes her uh, they they did like a whole whole summer with this year before last like they're they're really good friends of ours they're 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 awesome are, uh, you you wouldn't mention but i'm sure are there bands you've toured with that you didn't necessarily get along with and you're like man can't wait for this tour to end i don't want to know names i really don't but not not really like we, we usually like we can get along with pretty much anybody i'm gonna say that means you guys are all pretty chill then oh uh, yeah. yeah we're we're definitely pretty chill yeah um, even if we and, don't like it even if we don't like you we're gonna we're gonna make it a point to be super nice to you yeah yeah guys have you ever thought about playing at the american rodeo at dallas cowboy stadium i mean it's in february I'll play whatever yeah they tell us where to go and we'll go uh, I'm sure it's been discussed. Uh, you know, it's, it might be one of those things like Dallas. Like we're technically based out of East Texas, which is like in Tyler, which is like two hours from yeah. from Dallas. But Dallas is still yeah. like our uh, Nacogdoches. It, it's still a home hometown, you know. Yeah. So like we usually want to get like a good like headlining show um, that's like our own show in Dallas at least once a year. So that might be like why we why we have oh, Dallas Stadium. That'd be kind of cool, though. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big um, enough crowd. Yeah. Oh yeah, bigger than I, that would be our headlining, but um, and we're all big Dallas Cowboys fans too, so oh, uh, it would be great to play there. I knew you guys wouldn't be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Who's your team? Not the Cowboys. <laughs> then the only reason. Uh, I said See, you guys don't understand. When I was a kid, my dad's friend who worked with them was a, a, a football player for Arizona State. And he got drafted uh, in 1977. And then he got drafted by the Cowboys. And then the Cowboys cut him because they drafted another football player running back that same year named Tony Dorsett. Oh, TD. <laughs> so as I was 10 years old, I hate the Cowboys because they cut my friend. Real. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really hate the Cowboys, but I just grew up not liking them because they cut my my dad's friend. Well, I, I've come to find out you like you either love the Cowboys or you don't. <laughs> like, I like making fun in... of I like making fun of my friends who love the Cowboys. How's that? Hey, you could hey, that's yeah, understandable. We deserve it. We deserve it sometimes. Yeah, I grew, I'm um, a Chargers fan, so I'm I'm in the same boat. Like we look good mm -hmm. every year, and everyone has high hopes, and this is the year, and then it doesn't happen. Yeah, oh, we got spoiled every early year. because we we had three Super Bowls like when we were kids. Yeah, you yeah. know, so it's like this is going to last forever. It didn't. <laughs> like being a Steelers fan, like yeah, same boat. We, uh, well, I, I, yeah, I'm not a big Steelers fan, but you see, I uh, it is because you grew up a Cowboys we, fan. Yeah, exactly. You know, they got us. Uh, a long time ago, we got them. I think in ninety five, ninety six. Yeah. You know, with 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 Emmett. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was I was actually at the. Um, I've been to games since, but like I hadn't been to the game in a while. I think it was actually my second Cowboy game ever, and it was it was when Emmett broke the 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 Lord. record, for, and it was it was awesome experience yeah because like you could just feel the electricity in the air in that stadium like when he when he broke that record and it was like oh man this is awesome i uh i hadn't been to a charging game in a couple of years i was kind of trying to give up on him and then uh this last year during the rodeo uh one of my friends goes hey what are you doing tonight and i go 
hanging out, nothing. He goes, you want to go to the Charger game? Charger Raiders. I'm like, all right. So that was my first Chargers game in, at the new stadium there. I don't know if he's been by. It's, it's brand new. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. You know, we were down 42-0 at half. I think it ended up 61-21 to or 62-21. Chargers lost to the Raiders. Mm -hmm. And they, they yeah. fired the coach and the general manager the next day. And I'm like, the game, the one game I go to, we're down 42-0 <laughs> at half. Like, why am I a fan? Yeah. So it'd be like being at the at Dallas Stadium during the first playoff game. I was actually flying in. I was flying into Dallas that Sunday of that game uh, when they lost in the first round this year. That's when I was heading to yeah. Dallas to work. And I'm like, oh, there's not going to be a lot of fun f Cowboy fans around here. I think I had to turn it off. It, it was making me too mad. I was like, I don't need this stress. This ain't happening. I'm just, I'm, I'm done. We'll move on to the Rangers. So. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to tell did. you, I, I saw some really fun memes that I sent to some friends. Like Cowboy Troy is a huge Cowboy fan. Mm -hmm. The store manager out here is a big Cowboy fan, so I sent him some fun memes. Well, yeah, they're an I, easy team to make fun of. Well, my team yeah, didn't even make the playoffs, so I can I can make fun. I'll so. see some of those memes sometimes. I'm like. I mean, it's funny. It makes sense. Like, <laughs> you know, I can't, I, I can't hate too much. You know, I'm still, I'm still going to be a Cowboys fan, but well, yeah. Well, the one you I got, think was, you got was something to the effect of what, what are 50 millionaires going to be doing in February? <laughs> they'll be, wa they'll be watching. The golf. They'll be the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> watching the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Too hey, sad. It's what it is, right? Yeah. yeah. At least you got there. And we'll be back next year. It'll be our year. So, what's the what's the best way? That, uh, I'm sure Jamie, since he doesn't reply to his phone, what's the best way for? Would you guys like my listeners to kind of follow? Just follow Whiskey Myers and then kind of go from there. Or? Um. So I, I know we have all like the socials. I yeah. really only um, I got rid of everything except for Instagram a couple of years ago. So I I basically just like keep up with Instagram, but I know that there's the Facebook and yeah. I don't even know what that makes that dates me. It's not called the Facebook anymore, but Facebook, the Facebook. And, <laughs> and whatever Twitter is. And, and we, we're on everything and it's, it's whiskey Myers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tony and I are individually on Instagram too, though. Uh, that's about, I think that's all we have. <laughs> yeah. I had a TikTok for a while, but then I started watching too many videos and I would just go down rabbit holes. So I had to get off. But <laughs> I do that with YouTube. I try not to. It's hard not to like you see one thing and it's like, well, that other thing looks awesome. I'll watch that. And you look up three hours later, it's like, Yeah. I gotta the, do something else. The suggested algorithm's getting good. Yeah. It's very I, good. The, I, on X, the old Twitter, I just saw something where they said that they intentionally find like if you like the Dallas Cowboys, they will put in your algorithm people that hate the Dallas Cowboys because they want the interaction. <laughs> they don't care if it's <laughs> bad. Uh, that makes so, so that's genius yeah so just, you know you're a big cowboys fan so if someone's ripping apart the cowboys they know you're going to interact and say hey screw you da 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 the you know the ten the texans are terrible blah 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 and they just want the uh, that's that's why i'm personally not going to interact because i don't i don't want that but yeah there are many people that will yeah but they know <laughs> even if you interact might not be responding it could just be watching and going to their video oh, or their page. I will hundred percent watch on the sidelines. <laughs> so, but that's what they want. They just want interaction. So it's like, if, if you like Trump, then they're going to bring up some Biden stuff. If you like Biden, they're going to bring up Trump just because they want that, that, that. Yeah. The anger. They got it figured out, don't they? Yeah. They got us figured out. That's for sure. Yeah. So, but you just stay in your 300 square foot home. You'll be fine, brother. Hey. Yeah. You know what? I don't ever talk to you. I'm like, oh, I don't want to go over. <laughs> I never thought I was always the guy that wanted to go and be gone. And now that I have my own place, I like don't want to go anywhere. But <laughs> I also know that I've got the freedom to. I'm the, one of the few people that because everybody I know is married, has, has children, and all this stuff. And I'm the only one that's actually able to to drive around. Like I, I just came in town from Fort Worth today, and I'm gonna go up to Celeste from. I'm down in the Austin area. I'm gonna go up to the Greenville area to go play golf with Tony, and 
uh, on this later this week. So yeah, I'll drive around, but I don't really want to leave my house too much, man. I don't like. I don't. I got my. Yeah, I, uh, like I got. I, I, I like. I like. I like going. I, mean, I like I going get, to we, work. We travel like for going, a living, yeah. so. Well, that's why I was going to say. Kinda... I, I always tell my wife, I go, look, give me a night or two, when I come home. It's like just give me a night. Like if I was just gone for six days, the last thing I want to do is eat in the restaurant. Like, yep, I yep. just want to sit on my couch and eat whatever. I don't care if there's no food. Just I just I just want to sit in home. Yeah. Popcorn and I've a Miller ther- Light. I've had therapists tell me the movie. same thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that, that yeah, that's, like, that's our that's our deal. When I come home from a week trip or whatever, just give me one night off. Just yeah. Move out tomorrow night. So. Yeah, I I just I want to be home. Yeah. 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 Well, hey man, appreciate both of you being on absolutely well, thanks, man thank you thanks for having us on Pete. yeah man uh, the uh i won't i won't bug you jamie maybe i'll bug tony a little bit but, hey that's fine you can bug me you got my email <laughs> there's so many people I, i'm the middle man it's like hey tell jamie this so just tell me no there's 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 certain things i i don't i'm not a complete uh but when it comes to that i respond to things that i need to be responded to i just don't respond to memes and uh the, uh, the nonsense you know but yeah, but there are so many times hard. like business stuff will come up and it's like, tell Jamie this. And so I tell you, well, like, see, I, know. <laughs> I get mad at that because it's, but if it's business related, talk to me, but yeah, no, hit me up. P you got my, you got my email and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give I'll you my phone you, number. I'll, I'll, if you guys have time, we'll have to figure out whether it's Tori or uh, if, if you have a uh, depends on your, on your, on your scheduling, but if Santa Barbara, there's two great courses up there. Yeah. Sandpiper, if you look up Sandpiper and Galita, you'll be like, Sign me up. So, um, I'm I am always down for that. So. What's that? Are you close to there? Like, will you be in town? I'm. Always, I mean, my sister lives in Santa Barbara, so I. But um, Santa Barbara's like two and a half hours. Um, Torrey Pines is about an hour and a half, which is nothing for me. Right on. Well, I mean, anytime we're we're out west or anytime our paths cross, like let, let's hang. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you know, I, I know it's always sometimes you're you're like you said you're just in and out, but. But if you got a little little morning time or whatever, I'll get you to play nine holes or something. One hundred percent. That's how you get me. That's how you get me to respond. You talk to talk to me about <laughs> golf. I'm responding. I'll just send you a picture of the course and be like, sure. <laughs> "There you go. <laughs> Figured out my weakness. Found your kryptonite. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, again, thanks thanks so much for for being on the show. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. For Pete, us. I hope uh, I hope my audio quality and connection was okay. But uh, thank you for having us, man. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great summer. All right. You all too, right Pete. Cheers. Thanks, guys.